overindulged on the food and drink. Waistbands are under strain after the pounds have been piled on from all those huge Christmas dinners and the mince pies as well. But now it's all over. What's the best way of reversing the damage done and getting back into shape? Well, I'm joined on the line now by Rich Evans, who's a health and fitness guru from Chichester. Hello, Rich. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Very good, thank you. How much damage do we do over Christmas? Because we all go a bit mad, don't we? I think we all do. I've, I've in, overindulged myself, I think. So it's, uh, it's, it's far too easy. You know, we eat chocolate for breakfast, we have it for lunch and probably have another serving for dinner as well, you know, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite difficult. Everything, our, our usual routine is out the, out the window and we're, we're snacking and there's temptation everywhere. It's very hard to resist. Is it easy to lose? If, you, if you're generally uh, of the right weight for your height and you just have a couple of days overindulging, I suppose it's fairly easy just to just get rid of that very quickly. It is indeed. Just um, just get back into what you normally do and if you, if you lead a healthy lifestyle anyway, a couple of days off isn't really going to make that much difference. Of course, now is also the time, though, of resolutions and people who've caught a glimpse of themselves maybe in the Christmas photos and thought, well, that's not terribly flattering. Do you see a flurry of them? We do indeed, and it, it's normal this time of year. Everyone thinks, oh, I need to get back into shape, make the resolutions, and, and as I think, think you mentioned earlier in the show, come, come early February, a month or so into it, we've uh, all forgotten those resolutions and we've gone back to the way we were before. We are so predictable, aren't we? I mean, in the same way as you saw everyone uh, rushing to the shops just before, Christmas and going absolutely mad. Everyone has the same idea about diet and fitness. Why? Why is it that we go into it with just such great enthusiasm, and then and then we we get bored so easily? I think what we do is that, and, and the main problem that most people have is they they try and do. Uh, and there's all sorts of fatty diet diets around. You know, you read a diet book here, you see something else on the television there, you read something in the latest magazine, and unfortunately, it's just not sustainable. It might work for a couple of weeks, and then you get a little bit bored. You push on for another couple of weeks, and you might lose a couple of pounds but then you go I'm really not enjoying this food I want to get back to eating what I like and that's the problem so what I, I would recommend is is ditch the diet forget those diets and actually start changing a few habits and it might take a little bit longer but if you eat whole foods and don't uh, don't indulge in diet and, and fads that come and go and just change your whole lifestyle it will last longer so I suppose those fatty diets are tempting though because they all promise kind of very quick weight loss over just a, just a couple of weeks don't they that's it and that's that's the problem we, we live in an instantaneous society, don't we? Everybody wants everything now, and that, that's what those diets look very appealing. Unfortunately, you do it for a, um, you know, a week, a month, or even two. If you go back to what you were doing before, you'll end up where, where you were. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing, isn't it? I suppose um, the, you, you just have to do it, do it sensibly. It doesn't sound quite so glamorous or exciting doing it over a long, sustained period of time, but I suppose the quicker you lose it, the easier it is to just stick it all back on again. You're absolutely right, yeah, and Sarah, that's it, and that's the problem. You, you know, we all go on to these crash diets and, and, and lose it very quickly, which isn't particularly healthy. You, as you said, you get bored with it and we're, we, we're back to, to munching on those snacks that we were before before we even started because we're a little bit bored and, and want, to, want to get back to what we like. And of course you don't have to be hungry in a diet, do you? This is one of the, the preconceptions a lot of people have that you almost have to starve yourself but actually I suppose just maintaining a healthy lifestyle and eating the things that you should eat makes a massive difference. It, it does indeed and I, I, I urge all of my clients and, and anybody actually um, to eat lots of salad and veg and if you can avoid the things like your starchy carbs so get you know get off the bread and the potatoes the pasta and the rice because what happens when you eat those is your your blood sugar levels go go straight through the roof and then they crash your insulin all kicks in and you feel hungry so oh i'm a bit hungry i'll reach for biscuits and and, and exactly the same happens again so you end up in a bit of a, a yo-yo blood sugar going up feeling great crashing feeling tired and reaching for the next snack and it goes on and on Whereas if you can avoid those and, and, and eat lots of salad and veg and some nuts and fruit, and you won't you won't experience the same ups and downs. I suppose part of the problem as well, though, is it's not just Christmas. It's that we're kind of attracted to those more stodgy things during the really cold, wintry weather, aren't we? We are, and that, and that that's the that's the problem. And uh, you you think, oh, I'll just have a you know another another jacket potato, roast potatoes, a bit of extra pasta, and but there, there are other ways around it. You know, sort of nice, hearty, warming soups are always good. You know, use over use up your leftover veg and make a nice big soup that's uh, that's a good way of doing it
So you are going to see, uh, you, you, by the sounds of it, Rich, can have a very, very busy January. I think I think we will be. I think we'll be having lots of people hopefully turning up and uh, and, and getting back into the exercise, eating healthily, and uh, hopefully this year they'll, they'll keep it off. So. Do, you, do you see many, many people, though, that actually do keep it up? So maybe the people that you, you'll, you'll see back in January who, this time last year, were a very different shape and size? I think the key, I think the key thing for everybody is to actually do something that they enjoy, and that's like why we're seeing the likes of Zumba and Bokwa, and they're, they're, they're popular. People are actually going to do that. You know, if, if gyms bored you this, this time last year and you didn't keep it up, they're, they're really not going to inspire you next year. And I, I run something called the Fitness and Weight Loss Playground in Chichester, and we, we have space hopper race out, races, we have animal-themed workouts, sack races, wheelbarrow races, and it's all varied. Everybody loves it, and it's, it's, it's just different from being shouted out to do 10 more press-ups or running another 5K, going nowhere on the treadmill. It's all a bit dull, isn't it? So... Well, very good to talk to you. Thank you, Rich. That's great. Thanks very much, Sarah. Thank you, Rich Evans there. So are you planning diet weight loss in 2014 or did you do it this time last year? Do share your top tips.